time to get off your worry go around with Sherry Speroni, where learning about your brain will completely change your mind and your life. Hello, everyone. Welcome to part one of a four part series on how to be happy. Now, this is not fluff, no philosophical cliches, not that they don't inspire, but you already have plenty of those. And I'm not going to suggest that you go to some mountaintop and meditate to find yourself because that's where happiness is waiting. No, everyone wants to know the answer to the million dollar question. How the hell do we find happiness? Why is it so hard to be happy? Well, finally, this is going to give you some scientific understanding. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. So don't be surprised that finding happiness can be a challenge. Here is problem one. Your brain does not care about being happy or your happiness. It has zero interest in that. Of course, you may be thinking, wait a minute, I definitely care about being happy, but that's not your brain talking. That is your mind and they are not the same. Your mind is the consciousness that resides within your brain. Your brain's main job is to keep you alive. Try to hold your breath. It will knock you out to get you breathing again. If you drink too much, it will also have you pass out. So you'll stop drinking. That is its only job. It only cares about danger, not your unhappiness. If you have never heard this before, it is because this is a rather recent discovery. We now understand that our brains barely notice the positive things in our lives. Over the next several broadcasts, I am going to explain to you how to overwrite your brain and rewire it so that it begins to look for all of the positives in your life. And in two to four weeks, you will be feeling more happy, less stressed and less anxious than you have in years. I will show you how to harness the control of your mind and rewire your brain so that it obeys you. Your brain is not against you. It just hasn't been wired to understand that happiness is what will keep you healthy and safe in this 21st century. Being anxious and upset will make you sick and eventually kill you. Now in 1998, neuroplasticity was discovered. This means that our brain can switch jobs, grow new cells, and even enlarge areas depending on how much use we give them. This was mind blowing to scientists. They never thought this. They thought everything was in concrete and never changed. Neuroplasticity is what happens to the blind person who can suddenly hear better than normal people. All because their occipital lobe that used to receive input from his eyes is now bored and literally looks for the closest input so that it can get busy. In this case, it joins forces to help here and doubles the amount of brain power. And we have all heard the stories of people who had a head injury and then can suddenly play the piano or paint like they never could before. That's neuroplasticity. Most of us today are so stressed that we live for our weekends and vacations and we hate the days in between. We waste precious energy trying to manage the awful feelings and physical effects from stress. The pain of this stress is way too much on our bodies. It is the reason that we eat too much, sleep too much or not enough. We take risks with our lives. We crave comfort foods that are bad for us. And then we sleep with people who we don't know. And then we beg our doctors for prescriptions to stop the pain. Did you know statistically that many of us are unhappier than cancer patients and people in wheelchairs? I'm not kidding. In the absence of these shortcomings, how are we not smiling every day? Well, here is what science has discovered. Our brains due to evolution do not operate by being alert for the good things in our lives, only the bad. This negative bias has us all living on eggshells, waiting for the other shoe to drop 24 seven. And this is all because of a small area in our brain called the amygdala. It's your alarm bell, your personal warning system. When your alarm bell rings, it is supposed to make you feel horrible and uncomfortable. That's the point. Your brain is telling you to stop doing whatever it is you are doing. 
Now, for thousands of years, it functioned very well at keeping us alive in the wild by alerting us to the charging lion or a dangerous snake. Back then, our lives were in constant jeopardy. And as a woman, if your mate seemed unhappy with you, your alarm bells went off for that as well. Because if he left you, you had no food, no protection, and your offspring were going to die. Also, if you were shunned by other members of the tribe, you would become an outcast, and that was a death sentence within hours. So it wasn't just the lion in the bushes, but the treatment you received from your social inner circle that meant life or death, and your brain learned to warn you intensely of anything like that. Now your amygdala does a great job on focusing on what will kill you, but not what keeps you happy. Today, your brain is still overreacting to all of those same situations. Your boss being annoyed at you, a fight with your spouse, car trouble, family arguments. All of that could mean death as far as this little amygdala in your brain is concerned. And although we know they're not life-threatening in the 21st century, your amygdala still sends an SOS stress signal at the least sign of frustration or social slight. No longer can we allow our brains to hit this panic button because we just received a hundred emails or someone cut us off on the road. Your amygdala is causing you to react as if everything that annoys you could be life or death. It doesn't know that the coworker who got snippy with you isn't life threatening. It senses a violation, sounds the alarm, so you come out swinging. But here's the thing. Just because you know that you're not going to die from a surprise bill in the mail, it's still not enough to stop your alarm bell from telling you to panic. The amygdala immediately releases cortisol and epinephrine into your system. Once that chemical reaction happens, you can't think your way out of it. How fast does this happen? And how unaware are we? Well, let me explain it. If you're a woman and you ever had a hot flash, you can attest that they seem to come from nowhere very quickly without any provocation. But you'd be wrong. All hot flashes are triggered by your amygdala sounding the alarm. All hot flashes are due to a thought that just triggered a fear or concern. It even happens when you're sleeping. You just never notice this because it only takes a small concern for your amygdala to get busy and hit the alarm. Is it any wonder we yell, throw fits, and then afterward wonder, why the hell did I react like this? Why do I get so upset over trivial stuff? You are not alone. Every human being asks that question, but now you know why. It's because your brain thought your life was in danger. And without understanding this, you reacted instinctively. How can any of us be happy under all this pressure? It sucks the joy and energy out of everything. Now this is part one. Be sure to continue to listen to part two, three, and four. You're going to be very enlightened and hopefully find happiness at the end of the road. As always, you can send your questions to me here or through Twitter or Facebook at 10 Seconds to Happy. And I am always available for one-on-one -on -one sessions to help you find that evasive happiness. You take care and keep smiling.